Well, hey, what's up here, folks? Ricky McLean back for another Two Minute Tuesday. Today's question, we're gonna answer, what is the best construction type for your mass timber project? Now, the first thing that I would say in this regard is don't assume that it has to be type four construction. Under the context of the International Building Code, IBC, the legacy code that we're using in most projects here across the US, there are five different construction types, types one, two, three, four, and five. Type four construction has traditionally been called heavy timber construction. So when people start looking at using mass timber in their projects, sometimes there is an assumption that you have to use type four construction. The reality is, is that is not always the most optimal choice for mass timber projects. We're gonna break that down in today's video. Also, we've talked about Construction type is one of the key early design decisions for a mass timber project in one of our previous Two Minute Tuesday videos. Go back and check that one out. All right, so let's start from the beginning. If your project can be type five construction, in most cases, I would say use type five construction. The reason for that is because type five construction is the one that allows the most amount of use of mass timber in all elements of the building. Exterior walls can be mass timber, interior walls can be mass timber, beams, columns, floors, roofs, all of those elements can be mass timber construction, can be exposed mass timber construction, and generally speaking, we're looking at a zero or one hour fire resistance rating, depending on for type 5A or type 5B. Now, of course, the decision to use a certain construction type will heavily be influenced by the size and scale of the project, as well as the occupancy. So if you're not able to use type five construction, then I would say you start to weigh and balance the differences between type three construction and type four construction. I wanna break this down into four key differences between type three construction and type four construction that hopefully will help influence you in terms of understanding which is best for your project. Let's start by taking a look at type three construction. Type three construction, the IBC says the exterior walls have to be non-combustible materials or fire retardant treated wood. If they're bearing walls, they're a two hour fire resistance rating. Interior elements in a type three building can be any material permitted by code. So that includes light frame wood construction, mass timber construction, as well as steel, concrete, masonry, Type three construction is again, generally looking at either a zero hour or one hour fire resistance rating, depending on if we're type three B or type three A construction. Type four construction is defined in IBC as having solid timber elements that meet minimum sizes. And this is one of the key differences. Type four construction has to meet minimum size elements, but we don't have to provide a fire resistance rating. So unlike three A, for example, which has a one hour rating, on all exposed timber elements. Type four construction doesn't have to have that same one hour fire resistance rating. We just have to provide timber elements that meet the minimum sizes that the IBC requires. Now let's talk through a couple of notable differences between type three construction and type four construction. All right, in type three construction, as I mentioned, exterior walls have to be non-combustible or fire retardant treated wood. In the International Building Code, there is currently not a prescriptive recognition or allowance for the use of mass timber exterior walls in a type three structure. Now, I guess the caveat to that would be if we're using say a fire retardant treated NLT or DLT exterior wall panel, to date, we haven't seen that used, but it could be used under the building code. However, CLT as an exterior wall material is not currently prescriptively allowed in exterior walls of type three construction. We have seen some projects use that system through an alternate means and materials request process. On the other hand, type four construction does prescriptively allow CLT as an exterior wall material. It does provide guidance on the minimum thickness of that CLT, it has to be minimum four inches thick, and the outside face of that CLT exterior wall does have to be covered with either a fire retardant treated wood sheathing or a non-combustible gypsum board, something like that. All right, let's take a look at interior wall allowances, differences between type three construction and type four construction. Type three construction, if we're doing a bearing interior wall, has to be a one hour fire resistance rating, but it can be any material, light frame wood construction, steel construction, mass timber construction, etc. Interior walls that are non-load bearing in type three construction do not require a fire resistance rating. Of course, unless they're doing something like forming a fire barrier for uh, occupancy separation. Now this is one of the big differences. Type four construction requires that all interior partitions be either solid timber wood, meaning the minimum sizes for type four construction, or provide a one hour fire resistance rating. Now, an area that we've seen this come up as a challenge on a number of mass timber projects is let's say we're doing a mass timber office building, type four construction. 
Now the code is saying that all interior partitions, even if they're non-bearing, have to have a one hour fire resistance rating. So this would apply to bathroom partitions, partitions around a conference room. Let's say we have a glass enclosed conference room within an office building. Technically speaking, the code is saying that, that all of those walls that enclose that conference room have to provide a one hour fire resistance rating. So certainly something to be aware of when weighing the differences and balances between type three construction and type four construction. All right, the third difference between type three and type four construction is something that has evolved and changed over different versions of the building code, but that is concealed spaces. In type four construction, up to and including the 2018 version of the IBC, concealed spaces were prescriptively prohibited in type four buildings. Concealed spaces now we're talking about things like dropped ceilings, furred out walls, those types of things where the mass timber had to be exposed. We weren't allowed to have concealed spaces adjacent to a mass timber element. In type three construction, that limitation didn't exist. We could have concealed spaces, but if so, we might need to look at section seven of IBC and or NFPA 13 if the building is sprinkler to see how we need to protect the timber elements in those concealed spaces. Now, this is an area that is changing in the building code. The 2021 version of the International Building Code does provide prescriptive allowance for concealed spaces in a type four building. There basically are three options if we're looking at type four HT. Either the concealed space has to be sprinklered or has to be filled with non-combustible insulation or all exposed timber surfaces within the concealed space need to be covered with a minimum five eighths layer of type X gypsum wallboard. Now, one last thing to point out is regarding some new construction types that are being introduced in the 2021 IBC, construction types 4A, 4B, and 4C construction. Now, these allow taller mass timber buildings than have previously been permitted in the building code. And one thing I thought worth pointing out, especially for type 4C construction, is that it is not meant to replace any of the existing construction types for using mass timber construction. The reason I say this is because I've heard some designers say something to the effect of, well, I can use exposed mass timber all throughout a type 4C building, so my new mass timber structure is going to be type 4C, even if they're only looking at a five or six story building. And I would say don't necessarily go down that route. If your building could have been type 3A or type 4HT mass timber construction prior to the 2021 code being released, still keep doing it that way. There's no reason to look at changing, say, a 3A building to a 4C building if it could work as a 3A building. One of the main reasons for that is because 3A requires a one hour fire resistance rating, while 4C requires a two hour fire resistance rating. So maybe your timber elements have to get larger, your connections between elements have to be fire protected for a longer duration of time. And generally speaking, it's just not gonna be cost effective. So these new construction types do provide some new opportunities for tall mass timber construction, but they weren't meant to replace existing opportunities that we already have for doing mass timber projects. All right, well, that's it for today's Two Minute Tuesday, folks. I hope you found it useful. Tune in next week. We're going to start a two-part series on understanding mass timber, char, and fire resistance. We'll see you next time.